Hi everyone, welcome to King's. Um, thank you for coming along today and welcome to our introduction to student support services. Um, it's really good to see you all here. Um, so just to give you a bit of an idea about what the session will be doing today, um, we're going to have an introduction from our panel. So we've got a panel from student support services across King's. Um, an introduction from our Director of Student Services, Chris Shelley, and an introduction from our panel. Um, we're then going to be showing a brief introductory video, um, so that should give you really key information about our support services. Um, and then the majority of the session is actually going to be interactive with you. Um, we'd really like to know what questions you've got, how you're feeling, um, what you're excited about with starting Kings, what you might be nervous about. Um, so we're going to have quite a lot of time for you to be able to ask our panel those questions and to get as much information um, as you can um, out of the session. So I'll just hand over to Chris to start some introductions. Yeah, thanks, Kerry. Hi. Uh, uh, as Kerry says, my name's Chris Shelley. I'm the Director of Student Services. And, and the idea of today's session is to demonstrate the wide range, and not even they're not even all here, but a, a sample of the wide range of support services that we have uh, here at King's uh, to help guide you and support you throughout your, your time with us. So, um, you know, we hope uh, and trust that you will have a nice, smooth academic experience uh, with no problems inside or outside uh, the classroom when you'll graduate uh, with a first uh, exactly on time and you won't have had any problems whatsoever. But unfortunately, the reality says that that's not going to happen. There will be times when you uh, meet challenges you're going to meet um, uh, barriers that you will need some help in overcoming and, and everyone around this table uh, plus other services that are, couldn't be here today are here to help you help you do that um, you will maybe have had or have coming up a departmental induction now in there they will talk to you a lot about the academic program so who do you need to know uh, in the department how do you submit assignments what's your timetable and when will you receive your timetable uh, where do you need to go at certain times uh, what happens if you need to miss a lecture who's your personal tutor all of this kind of information will be coming to you from your department in the next uh, few days if you haven't already started to receive it the idea of today's session is to to look at the things that we can provide for outside of the academic uh, experience outside of the classroom uh, there's a whole range of things that you might need support on and we've got a whole range of services here to, to, to guide you through that so uh, I will let them introduce themselves so that uh, you, you can get a sense of who you've got here uh, and start thinking about what you might want to ask and then you can be around the table so we'll start at this end of the table I think and work our way down do you want to take the microphone there? Uh, so hi guys, good morning. Uh, my name is Lawrence, I'm the Catholic chaplain here, and this is my colleague Jim, he's our Anglican chaplain. Um, the chaplaincy service essentially uh, works to meet the spiritual and the pastoral needs of our college community. And we do that in various ways. Firstly by providing a listening ear to all students, so we have a base at each of the different campuses. So if you ever want to come to just chat, maybe something's on your mind, you want to come and chat to someone who will listen to you, we're always there to hear you. We also offer one-to-one -one spiritual direction, so if you seek there's some questions about spirituality that you might have, we're always there to listen and to seek your questions. But we also do various other activities. We run retreats, we uh, do many community events, we run an international lunch every Monday, which is a free lunch for students to come and enjoy. We do various other services, of course, many other activities which meet the needs of our community. Yeah, as Lawrence says, uh, I'm Jim. I've just arrived, uh, as Lawrence has, as uh, full-time chaplain here at Guy's. And I think the word service is quite a good word. Um, it, it's, it's about helping staff and students. And even though we do have, you know, formal services in the chapel, that's only a tiny, tiny element of what we do. We are here to serve you, and we only know how to serve you if we kind of speak to you. So please do come over to our brand new, spanking new chaplaincy offices uh, in Henriette Raphael, other side of the sandpit. You'll know where we are because there's a Darth Vader in the window, really easy to see. And um, yeah, come and talk to us. We'll be in the, probably in the offices, at least one of us will be there almost all the time. And we've got a brand new coffee machine, <laughs> fantastic water cooler, brand new teapot. So um, come in and have a cup of tea. So you, you, you're welcome, whether you're a person of faith or non, uh, and we can help refer you, should need be, to other colleagues of the services. But we are there to kind of to listen and to work out through listening how best to serve you. Uh, my name's David, and I'm here to represent Library Services. So obviously um, we have 
fantastic print collections, not just here, but uh, we have many libraries across the campus, across London. But obviously these days, libraries offer a lot more than just a book repository, lending out books. We, we have a whole suite of training, support, uh, resources around there, some fantastic online resources, massive and massive online resources. Um, and uh, yeah, we're very much here to help you and get the, the best in, out of the many resources that we have and ensure you can uh, make the best of your studies. And we have some fantastic resources and very many helpful and fantastic people who can do that for you. Hi, I'm Alison Stenton. I'm the uh, college senior tutor. Um, I teach medical humanities here in the medical school. Um, also, I'm here today to represent uh, the college's It Stops Here campaign, which is our um, way of saying that sexual harassment at university is not acceptable. You may have met some of our student ambassadors in the tent outside. Um, as part of that campaign, we run a um, harassment advisors network where we invite students. Should you experience any difficulties around this area, we very much hope you won't. But if you do, you are welcome to come and talk to one of us. We're all trained and we're there to help you work out what would be the best thing for you to do. So um, please do talk to the ambassadors outside and, and get a free badge. Also, free tattoos. Um, not real ones, I hasten to add, um, which I forgot to put on this morning. Um, but, uh, and also we have a website where you can find out how to get in touch with us. Hi, my name's Jack. I'm from KCLSU, which is the Students' Union here at King's. Um, I'm one of the five student officers which are elected each year to represent all the students at King's. Um, so as a Students' Union, we provide loads of things, including all the uh, activity groups, uh, sports clubs. We have uh, an independent and confidential advice service. We provide academic representation. Um, and we also can help you uh, run campaigns about things which you're passionate about. Um, there's loads of things. I could probably talk for hours about it. But um, if you, you'll see us at our Welcome Fair this Friday and Saturday if you have any more questions. Hi, I'm Diana Bass. I'm a student counsellor. And um, to tell you a bit about the counselling service, we have a counselling service on each site. The central one is at the Strand. You apply online. Um, we have a, a wide range of very well-trained mental health professionals and we deal with a full range of difficulties, everything from non-specific anxiety to full-blown suicidal feelings, um, symptoms of distress, relationship problems, too many, not enough, the wrong kind, likewise drugs and alcohol difficulties, um, eating problems. Um, there isn't a lot, in fact I can't think of much that, that, that we haven't seen over the years, so please uh, don't wait till too late in your course to come forward if you're anxious about anything and you just need to check it out, do get in touch. Uh, we also run groups uh, of various sorts, relationship groups, sexuality, um, OSCE practice, o OSCE anxiety should I say, not practice. We, we don't offer cups of tea, I'm afraid, but we do have a whole range of other things we do offer. So it's good to see you. Thank you. Hi, everyone. My name is Wilma Gracias, and I represent the King's Wellbeing Service. Uh, the wellbeing team is here to coach and to empower you to think about your health and wellbeing and really look after yourself while you're here um, and to teach you the life skills and strategies that you need to be successful while you're here at university and as well as in your personal lives. So we're all about getting the message to look after yourself, and we do that through a variety of ways. So we have a coach based at each of the campuses that offers one-to-one -one free and confidential coaching and that's all about setting goals and raising resiliency and looking at within yourself to find solutions for some of the issues that you may be facing. We have workshops and courses that are all about looking at ways um, and strategies and tools to really look after yourselves. Things such as resilience, self-care, mindfulness. Uh, you'll find us at each of the campuses in more informal ways such as hosting tea and talk 
box where you can just come and have a chat with us. We have drop-in sessions. And then we also do campaigns and events. Um, if you're here at Guy's Campus, one of the things that we're doing is a book club and um, a run club. So if you're interested, just visit our website um, and follow us on Twitter. Thanks. Hi there, my name is Greta Gavin. I'm the Student Advice Service Manager for the Money and um, Housing Advice Services. But I'm also here to just represent um, the Advice and Guidance um, section within Student Services, which includes as well advice for international students um, through the International Student Support Team and um, the Disability Advisory Service as well. Um, so uh, all of us work towards providing you practical advice to overcome any barriers that you might have um, that may come up on, you may come upon while you're studying at King's. Um, these can be from finding somewhere to, to live, what that involves, um, to resolving a problem if you have any problems or issues while you're living in the private sector, to looking at your budget, making it work for you, um, what kind of additional funds might be out there that you could apply for. Um, to putting uh, practical arrangements in place for you should you have a disability um, and putting you in contact with all the different people that can help make that happen for you. Um, you can find out more about our services on our website which is just kcl.ac.uk forward slash advice so really easy to find. We also have several different Facebook groups on the different areas that we advise on and we also have a Twitter account which is just King's Advice. Um, we work very closely with the Compass who you can find on all of the campuses and they will triage your query put you with the best specialists who can help you. Um, but we do have drop-ins as well on all the campuses throughout the week. Um, our base at Guys is over in Henriette Raphael House on the ground floor, very close to the chaplaincy, where we'll regularly go and steal their coffee. Um, and we also work in the same place as um, Wellbeing and some representatives as well from the counselling service, so their mental health advisors. Okay. Hello everyone, uh, my name's Andy and I'm here representing King Sport. Um, there's basically uh, four parts of uh, King Sport that uh, I want to quickly tell you about. Uh, the first one is really our health and fitness offer. Uh, at the moment we only have a fitness centre at our Waterloo campus, uh, but it's, it's um, there for everybody to join. Uh, hopefully in the new year there'll be one um, that, that we run on, on this campus. Uh, in the meantime, uh, the Guys Sports and Social Club run a small fitness centre on this campus at the moment. The uh, second part really is our uh, social and um, sport offer, is our participation sport offer, uh, which goes under the name of Be Active. Uh, if you're in halls, hopefully some of you have seen some of that already. Um, advertised uh, to you. If, it's, uh, if you're in halls, you, you get that as part of your halls offer. Um, if you're not in halls, uh, it costs a small amount of money a year to be part of it, um, about £15, um, and that gives you access to about 30 sports uh, every uh, week um, during term time. Um, it's it's non-competitive, uh, most of it's non-competitive, uh, it's fun, it's for uh, those who aren't interested in the next offer, which is the uh, competition sport offer which is mainly around Wednesday afternoons uh, which KCLSU uh, look after uh, and again if you're interested in uh, joining a sports club and um, doing that in a competitive manner uh, then the welcome fair on Friday and Saturday up at the Barbican is the best place to sign up and have a chat to the teams and uh, decide what you might want to get involved with. The last offer, hopefully there might be one of you in the room, is our elite athlete um, um, offer here. So we do offer scholarships to um, athletes that are trying to have a dual career, keep their athletics um, kind of going or whatever other sport it is, uh, and also try and study here at King's as well. So we just give additional support to those individuals. Okay. All right, so that's a lot to take in, that's a lot to remember, you don't need to remember it all. The kind of point of today's session is to give you a flavour of the different services that we have on offer and, uh, and to just to uh, make sure you understand how you can ask for support uh, and access it if, if you need it. So we'll end on that later, uh, but a good way of just getting a flavour of it is a short video that we put together. So before we pass over to you and get really interactive, we'll just watch, 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 we'll watch the video, <laughs> we'll watch the video and then we'll uh, pass over to Kimmy. King's College London is one of the world's leading research and teaching universities. 
And whether you're an undergraduate, a postgraduate, a brand new student or an old hand, there's always more to discover about King's and the services we have on offer. Our campuses are spread throughout London and within them we have a wide range of social spaces, cafes and bars. Not to mention King's Sports Fitness Centres, sports facilities and programmes which are available for everyone to participate in, whether you're a first time participant or an elite performer. As a student at King's, you're automatically a member of your students' union, KCLSU. The union is led by students for students, and there are loads of ways to meet new people, build communities, and make change together. If you're looking for any advice or information during your time here, our student services hub, The Compass, is on hand to help. You can find The Compass service online and based in each of our main campus libraries. The Compass staff can help you access all the support services provided at King's, including the Student Advice Service, which offers additional guidance and practical solutions to money, immigration, housing and welfare. If you have a disability, a long-term medical or mental health condition, or a specific learning difficulty that might impact your studies, our Disability Advisory Service will be happy to discuss support options with you. We hope your time at King's will be stress and problem free, but if you have any concerns about your health, we have a dedicated NHS Health Centre on campus, so be sure to register with a GP as soon as possible. We also provide a free and completely confidential counselling service, which offers both practical and emotional guidance as and when you need it. The chaplaincy team is available to support those of all beliefs, backgrounds and views. Students have access to prayer rooms, chapels and student faith societies. When it comes to study, King's organises free classes for everybody to help you improve essential study skills like writing critically and referencing. We also offer academic English classes for EU and international students. Of course, you can also make use of our campus libraries, which provide extensive resources, facilities and study space. If you're a postgraduate student, the Graduate School offers training, funding and specialist guidance so that you can take full advantage of your time here at King's. And what about after you leave us? Well, throughout your time here, we'll help you explore your options with career advice, work placements and specialist support throughout the job hunting process. So that's it. Remember, for any further information or advice, head to the Compass and you'll get all the help you need. Okay, great. So um, hopefully between the introductions from the services and the video, you're starting to get a bit of an idea of the support that you can get on offer and here at King's. Um, so what we want to do now is do something a bit interactive. Um, so we're going to do just a practice poll at first. Um, so I hope that everyone's either got a phone, a laptop or some way to access the internet. Um, if you haven't, maybe someone who's sitting next to you or someone who's sitting near to you will be able to share with you. Um, so the idea is that we go onto a website and we'll give you the link. Um, the first question we're going to ask is, where are you from? What's your home city or your hometown? And um, this is just really a practice to, to get you um, understanding the technology. Um, so what you do is you go to the website there, which is just on the left, polleb.com forward slash askkcl, and you should see that the question will be, what is your home city or town? So if you type that in and press submit, then we should start to see some answers come up on the screen. I'm from Macclesfield. <laughs> yes, second. <laughs> Calgary, Madrid, and Macclesfield. <laughs> Lots of people from London and Singapore, so the words will get bigger and the more people that submit the same answer to. Does anyone have any troubles with it? It's not working for anyone? Uh, as Kerry said, if you're struggling, then you know, partner with the person next to you. Excellent. It looks like most people have got the hang of it. Oh, Woodford, me too. <laughs> <laughs> I 
Okay, great. Um, Excellent. That's brilliant. So hopefully you all can use it. It's not too difficult to use and you can see what we're trying to do. So to move on to some questions that are more about our services and to start to understand what you'd like to ask us, um, we're going to do another practice poll, so something, something quite quick. Um, this question will be, um, what are you most excited about? Um, you just started here at King's, what are you really looking forward to doing? Anything that's exciting you, it could be about our services, it could just be about things in general. Nervous um, <laughs> 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 um, Always anything you're nervous about. Um, some worries, first week worries, worries for in general time here. Just general comments, it would just be great to see um, your initial thoughts. Thick and fast. Oh. Toast. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Libraries. Someone's excited about libraries. <laughs> or maybe nervous. I'm nervous about libraries. Sausages. <laughs> Someone that's really either excited or nervous about food. So the, doing this session just before lunchtime, clearly everyone's thinking about food. <laughs> Bananas, sausages. Toast. Toast. Beers before midday. Okay. Um, <laughs> 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 okay, so I think there's some really good things coming through. Thank you. Um, so I think what would be good is just to get some initial reactions from some of the panel. Um, so there are some things there about meeting new people, cultural differences, making friends. And they've come through a few times. Um, does anyone want to have some initial reactions to what people are saying there? My first thought is, it's great to see so many of you saying you want to meet people. This session is, we do this differently now. We used to do it where each person around this table would have sort of 10 minutes each to try and drill everything that they do into your minds and that you would walk away and go, oh, what on earth was that? Uh, and the feedback the students have given us in the past is we, do, we want some information and we want to know where we can go, but we also want to meet people. So what's about to happen is you're about to start chatting to each other and, and, and getting to know some, uh, some more people. And, and so we really wanted to build that into the session. So that's great. And what you'll notice is some of the things up there, probably some of you are thinking and didn't write it and actually just seeing someone else put it there is quite reassuring oh someone else is wor worried about you know how big london is someone else is nervous about uh, the timetable or, or, or time management etc and that's really great and that's why we run these sessions to give you the chance to sort of interact and, and understand uh, that everyone's in the same boat really uh, and just flicking back to the first one my thoughts were just how, how amazingly diverse uh, the, the student body here is at King's and all those different cities and countries that were represented in just in this room. Uh, so we're talking about integrating and meeting new people, etc. Um, we've already demonstrated it. If you turn to someone next to you, about behind you, in front of you, you'll probably find someone from a different country, maybe even a different continent, uh, and that's amazing. Uh, but it also means all of you are in the same boat in terms of being maybe excited and nervous about that in, in equal measure. So there we go. Any other thoughts from anyone? Libraries have come up quite a number of times, and studying has quite, quite appeared quite a few times. Um, we, do, uh, we, we, we work very hard to make our resources and benefit user friendly and easy to access. Um, and when you do the more in, in detailed inductions, you, you get an idea of that. So hopefully that will take some light in mind. It's, it's, we you know, design it to be as user friendly and as accessible as possible. Um, our staff, uh, our staff uh, to a man and a woman, they're phenomenally friendly. Um, our motto is here to help, and we take that very, very seriously. You know, uh, the bottom line is the uh, university pays us to help, but we really want to help you, we really want to engage with you. And all of our frontline staff, we get much positive feedback about our frontline staff, how friendly they are, how engaging they are, how, willing to go, how they are willing to go the extra mile. So please don't worry about library staff, they'll be your friends to the medical course, I can guarantee you. And the life is hopefully the life itself will become like a friend. I would That's the kind of feedback we get. I think what came to mind uh, when I saw a lot of these come up was a quote that one of my mentors once told me, and he said, uh, "The only thing that happens when you step outside of your comfort zone is that you make your comfort zone bigger." And this is just a great opportunity for you to step outside of your comfort zone and get into that area that might be a bit uncomfortable. And with time and with patience and with some trial and error and hopefully some laughter and fun, 
that comfort zone just expands to a place where you feel comfortable meeting new people, where you feel confident in you know accessing support, and when you feel like you're learning and getting the most out of your course. So definitely take advantage of some of the support that's been talked about and step outside of your comfort zone. I was going to say, one thing that flashed up was homesickness. And I think um, that can be quite crippling sometimes. Um, and, you know, the, the thing is not to feel ashamed of it um, because it, it can hit us at both a psychological but also a physical level. You know, everything's different. And, and at the end of the day, we, you know, we're surrounded, when we're surrounded by familiar things, smells, sounds, places, and suddenly put ourselves somewhere completely different, it can be a bit of a shock and take, take some time to, you know, manage. So, um, it's not unusual, if, especially if you're coming from a long way away. It's like an immigration and you have to go through that reaction sometimes. Um, talk to people. If you phone home every day, fine. It's no problem. Just find ways to, to comfort yourself and stay connected. And find ways to make it cheap. <laughs> <laughs> if you're phoning home every day, you Skype. Me. It's Skype. <laughs> <laughs> Can I just add to that? So um, on the advice pages, there is a lot of information for international students um, and settling into the UK. But it's actually quite useful for all students. Anyone who's new to London, there's some information and guides on there on culture shock, finding your way around London. And you may also see, um, if you've been to New York over the last couple of days, our home mentors have been out and about talking to students about getting around on the transport, what you can do for free, how to immerse yourself in British culture. But what we also say to our international students when they come to the sexual orientation is that um, there is a little bit of the world in every part of London you will always find something from home because London is such a melting pot. Um, so it's worth exploring what part of home is here in London. If you are feeling a little bit like you're missing something, it's quite often food as a trigger. I'm sure you will find a restaurant that will bring you something back from home. Um, and it's worth doing that and doing that with a new phone and you know, sharing that experience with them. And if you can't find a restaurant, so I can't find, there is no Puerto Rican restaurant in London, you cook the food and invite friends over and share that culture with them, and they'll appreciate it just as much as you'll appreciate the company. Or find a society at KCLSG with other Puerto Rican students. <laughs> yeah, yeah. And if there's not one, you can set one up. Yeah. Great. Excellent. Okay. Um, just knit back to the presentation. So the, um, the final or uh, kind of main part of the session today is to get some more in-depth questions. And uh, the way we're going to do that is we're going to get you guys to talk to each other. So get into groups of around about six, but, you know, just a, a kind of natural group around you. And you can come up with some questions that you would like to ask the services. I'm going to ask that one person um, as part of that group sends in uh, that question using the, the, the same service that we've got there um, with, with the poll everywhere. Um, you can also ask general questions if you're just not sure about something. Um, I'm sure someone on the panel will be able to, um, to, to help with an answer. Um, hopefully that makes sense to everyone and I'm going to get you guys to just kind of self-organise into groups around you. So a few of you together and then you know, one of you on your phone um, sending them in. So I'll go back to the polling page now. Uh, that's here. So it's a, just a general, what questions do you have? They can be um, you know, as specific or as general as you like and we'll answer those questions for you. Thank you. 
we could always bring that into the whole Okay, do you want to just pause for a minute? That was a bit loud, wasn't it? Hello. <laughs> um, we'll just pause and we'll see if we can answer some of these questions now because we can tick them off the poll and then we can... We can... We can that's not loud. There we go. Uh, and then we can get to some of the ones further down. Um, it's quarter to twelve, so everyone's asking about food. Um, the, so the first two. Uh, where do I get good and cheap food in Kings? Uh, well, uh, KCLSU provide food in their uh, venues, so uh, Jack might want to talk about that in a minute. Um, there are uh, Kings food venues all around the campus, and they are very reasonable. Uh, but there are all sorts of um, offers and deals that you can get around London. If you get an NUS card, which you can get from KCLSU, uh, you'll get a discount on quite a few uh, food outlets. You'll get free things with some. Uh, and uh, also, if you're, for example, if you're an O2 customer, you can download a priority app and it gives you like lunch for a pound one day a week in, in some places. There's all sorts of tips which you can get on the student money advice pages as well. So you can look those up on, on the website. Jack, do you want to talk about case of the shoe venues? Um, so yeah, just to expand on the point about student discounts and things. So you can just use your regular student card for some discounts. So for example, you, at McDonald's you can get a free hamburger or something with your with your if you buy a meal, but you can also buy AUS extra cards from us, which are, I think are £12 a year, which gets you discounts on lots of restaurants and 10% off food shopping in the co-op and things like that, so it's, it's really worth getting one of those if you can. In terms of food we have on, on campus, we have um, on this campus opening on Monday um, our refurbished Guy's Bar, which does things like burgers and sandwiches, and we also have a new coffee shop opening. Um, over on the other side of the of the quad, um, so they open on Monday and they'll have cheap food. Um, and on the Strand campus, we have Waterfront as well, which is also a bar, but it also does um, similar food to Guy's Bar. Um, so they're, I think, they're the cheapest food on campus. I think. Um, so do check those out. And if, in terms of microwaves, there are microwaves quite often in quite a lot of departments. So not in the sort of general spaces, but in your departmental spaces when you go into them and start accessing your teaching lookout. Because quite a few departments do have microwaves, and there are again some in students' union spaces as well. Um, so yeah, if you just want to uh, bring your own food in, you can reheat them in, in microwaves there. So well, that will do on the food, I think. There's quite a few related to libraries. So David, do you want to pick up a few? Um, so. Where are we at? Uh, so the printing one, is it? Yeah, this one here. So how do printing services work? Okay, so the printing system we have is called Follow Me Printing. So uh, when you send a print job off, instead of printing to an actual machine, you print to, an, to the network. Now your print job will stay in the network for up to 72 hours, and you can use any of the machines located anywhere across the university. You're not, like, you're not pinned down to one location. On each of the machines is a sensor, and you just present your ID card, and on the screen will, will pop up your print job. 
The first time you use it, you'll have to register your card, so it'll ask you for your details. You only need to do that once, though. Thereafter, you just present your card to the device, and then it will pop up and, and deliver your print job. It also means that if you send something to print, you no longer need it, uh, you can just delete it. So in the old days, it would have just come out and start costing you money. Now you can have a bit more control over it. Um, it costs, the standard cost is 5p per sheet for a standard A4 black and white. Um, Everyone who's now enrolled, you get three pounds of print credit automatically there. That will be on your account. And it's a bit like taking money out of a bank. So every time you print off, it just takes money off your account. So when you log into a student PC, on the right-hand side, there'll be a little icon called Paper Cut. You click into that, and that, that shows you all your print history, uh, pending print jobs, everything you, you need. And you, you can also top up your credit from there as well. So you click into that, and it's like topping up online so you can use a credit or debit card or in the libraries we do have little cash um, boxes where you can pay for cash if you don't want to use your credit and debit card. Was that all right? Was that? Okay, we've got questions about non-King's libraries and Skills Forge and study skills classes, which I reckon are all yours as well, David. So, which one do I want to take first? Uh, Whichever. Non-King's libraries. Sure, so, uh, we have, um, we're part of the University of London, so that means uh, you can get uh, reference access to a whole host of other university libraries like UCL and, and Imperial and so on and so forth. Um, on, on the library pages, you've got uh, a tab called Visiting Us. If you click into that, it's got, uh, I'm having to look now, uh, access schemes. And you click into that and that will give you all the, uh, the access scheme um, arrangements that we, uh, we have. We also have uh, a very good relationship with Senate House over in Russell Square. So with that, you get a bit more option, a bit more flexibility. Um, you can, it's free to join, uh, and you can actually take out items, up to 10 items. Uh, you can also access a number of their e-resources as well. So you can also use the space, and you get access to the collections, because we have a much more uh, ongoing relationship with, uh, with Senate House. Skills uh, Forge. Skills Forge. Skills Forge is uh, it's a website essentially where um, um, classroom training and teaching is booked. So we use it for our liter literature, um, uh, information skills training, and so on and so forth. So that's all Skills Forge is. You can search for Skills Forge in the KSO website, or there is a link to it uh, from the library uh, pages under Subject Support. So simply, it's a way of um, timetabling training sessions, so you can see which are coming up and you can then book on the courses and it gives you all the locations. So essentially it's like a booking system really. That's what Skills Forge is. And is that a source of where you go to register for the study skills classes for, which is the next question down as well? In the study no, that, that's, that's slightly different. If we're talking about um, uh, study skills training, um, study skills training, we, uh, you can book that through um, our library guides. So if you go to the, to the library landing page, there's a section called library guides and you've got one uh, link to there called Study Skills Centres. So it differs slightly from Skills Forge. And Study Skills Centres will help you with maths and stats, um, time management, academic writing skills, and so on and so forth. So they're actually with the session, you can book one-to-one -one sessions that last 45 minutes, and they're run by experienced PhD students. And we have Study Skills Centres on each of the campus libraries. They're starting again, the one-to-one -one sessions are starting again uh, shortly um, in late October, or mid-October, I think that's when the one-to-one -one sessions will start. However, it's worth visiting these pages because we have a whole host of online resources as well around the same thing, around time management, um, maths and stats and so on and so forth. It's called Skills for Study Campus. Skills number four, Study Campus. And it's a fantastic set of online resources for just this kind of thing. So that's slightly different from Skills for uh, and yes, you can find free journals and have access to journals via the library is the answer, isn't it? Ab journals. Absolutely, absolutely, yes. Um, we have, um, most of our journals now are online. We, d we have very few print journals. Um, yeah, so again, from the, if you find your way to the library landing page, which is kcl.ac.uk forward slash library, you've got a series of quick links on the front there, right in front of you, one of which is how to find a journal. That will then take you through to the A to Z of journal, with a list of A to Z titles, or you can search for an individual title you need. So we have a massive amount of uh, journal content online. Absolutely, pretty much everything you need will be there, I guarantee it. OK, that's enough about the library. Um, we've got a, a lecturer and a student in the room sat next to each other. So what happens in reading week? Alison or Jack, who wants to go first? Um, are there medical students in the room? You don't get a reading week. 
<laughs> I don't think. Um, but for, for other students, you will. It's, it's mid-term, so it's when you catch up, effectively, I would say. So reading is the key word there. You can catch up on the reading you haven't been able to do because you've been in lectures and having fun and doing all the other things. Um, you can go home if that's what you want to do. Um, there won't be any scheduled formal teaching in reading week. Um, so really what you, want, what you do is, is, is up to you. Um, staff may be around, may not be around. Um, certainly we would probably be available on email, so if you had any queries and stuff then we would be happy to answer those. But really it's just about an opportunity to sort of pause, catch up in your studies um, and get ready for the next block of teaching, I would say. <coughs> I would add for you poor medics, because I was a previous medic, um, you get consolidation weeks at the, end of your, at the end of your blocks, which are similar to reading weeks. But there will be some scheduled teaching, so you can't go home, really. Um, so yeah, but I, as a previous medic, I didn't really have reading weeks. So, um, but I know other students who find them quite useful, um, as, as Alison said, that they couldn't necessarily do some of the reading that was required of them during uh, term time. So it's just some time to go home and do reading in, in, in familiar environments, which I know a lot of students appreciate. Great, thank you. Right, we'll go back to you. Continue your conversations. There's loads more questions there you can continue to vote on. There might be new things that are coming up. So another five minutes of talking and voting and then adding questions in, and then we'll have another round of answers, and then we'll see if we can round up with some top tips for you. So, crack on. There's a few. I think we've got a lot to get through here. We're not going to get through every single one, so uh, apologies if we don't get to your question, but you can come and uh, grab us at the end if you like. Uh, I'm just going to uh, allocate, negotiate, allocate, delegate, that's the word, um, some answers to people. And can we make sure that people pass the microphone around and speak into it clearly, because I know not everyone's picking things up. Um, are there any lockers? There are some lockers dotted around the campus. Most of them are in departments, so the best thing to do is, again, when you get to the department, have a look and see uh, what there is uh, there for you to use.
views. Um, I'm just thinking about ones I can tick off before we get into the... No, let's not do that. Right, okay, we'll know the top one. How do you balance private life and studies in a way to achieve a first-class degree? A first-class degree, by the way, which was one of the questions, is the highest level of degree you can get. You get allocated a first, an upper second class, 2-1, a lower second class, 2-2, two, two, a Desmond... Uh, Desmond, two, no. Um, a third... Fourth, fifth, I don't know. Is that it? Third? Pass. And then that's it. Right. Yeah. Alright, so that's a really great question. Um, I would say the, the, the best way is to really be on top of your time management skills. Um, so this is a time where you have to prioritize and no one's going to tell you how to prioritize your timetable. No one's going to tell you where you have to be um, and what you have to do every moment of the day. So it's up to you to develop that skill and prioritize what's most important, what can I do, what do I need to sacrifice. And if that's a skill that you don't have in an area that you're struggling with, then I would highly recommend coming to see a well-being coach and signing up for um, some sessions with them. Great, thanks. Um, topping up your student card, um, I think David explained how to top up the printing bit on your student card. The, the latest thing here at King's, which is new to all of us as well, so we don't know the answer, is that you can use your actual card to pay at some, for like King's food and things like that. Um, we don't know how it works. <laughs> because it's literally been introduced this week, but there are flyers on all of the like King's Food outlets and on receptions and things, so um, you can find out how that works, and then if you can come and tell us, that'd be great. Um, <laughs> thank you. Um, okay, groups add, and activities for mature students. Oh, so good, David. No, can I just add about um, time management? That we have um, lots of online resources and um, some textbooks on time management as well. Just uh, you search in the library um, catalogue system. We've got plenty of titles around that kind of thing. Oh, Good, no, that's great, thank you. Um, groups and activities for mature students. Chris, do you want to talk about that first? And then, Jack, do you want to pick it up and then cover off all the other KCLSU stuff? Because there was quite a bit on there on KCLSU. Hi there. Um, we have got some advisor in, in my team that specifically help mature students. Um, so we've got um, our welfare benefits advisor um, will help you if you've got children and you might have childcare issues or concerns about filling your funding gap, um, or you may have um, a sickness or disability that you might need assistance with as well, which is obviously for all students. Um, we do provide some guidance and support if you're a mature student and you you just want to be able to talk around making that transition, we are here to support you. But we don't organise any groups as such. We are aware of the Graduate and Mature Society, which hopefully Jack can talk about. Um, and we also have got a parents um, student network, a student parents network on Facebook that we keep an eye on and we're running the event today for student parents um, afternoon tea at Waterloo. Um, so a lot of what we help with is around students who are mature with children because there is a lot of assistance you might need with respect to childcare and extra funding costs. Um, but we can be there for you as a general support if you need it to. Um, yeah, so as uh, already mentioned, we have the Graduate Mature Student Society who um, will be at Welcome Fair this Friday and Saturday if you want to go along and meet them. Um, they organise a lot of events that are um, that are fit around mature students' timetables, including those with caring responsibilities or who, who, are, who are parents, So it, the, and their timetable the events that they hold are, are much more time friendly um, and just as well we have our advice service as well which um, can also alongside the KCL um, uh, advice service help with the transition back into studies um, and with any issues that might be surrounding any other responsibilities that you may have. Um, but I should say that all societies at, at uh, case at issue um, in order to be society they have to be inclusive to everyone and um, so hopefully there's many societies out there which we have to fit around uh, mature students. Should I go on and do the other questions? Okay, um, so KCLSU societies uh, don't Obviously, there's around 270 student groups, uh, societies at Case LSU. It's huge amounts, but they don't. They all. It's up to them when they want to meet up. Um, so, um, as Chris said earlier, um, if you do sports, you do it on kind of Wednesday afternoon mainly. But there's different uh, groups meet up at different times, so you can be parts of many different groups. Unfortunately, sometimes they do clash, but then, then you have to make a decision which you want to go to. But um, that you can be members of many, many societies uh, because they will all meet at different times of day. Uh, you can find out when they meet 
um, if you go uh, uh, see the Welcome Fair or go on our KCLSU website. Um, how do you get an NUS card? So your student cards are standard NUS cards, so that, that, that means it's, you can use it to get student discounts. If you want an NUS extra card, which gives you additional discounts, which I said earlier is, I think, about £12 a year, um, you can go to one of our student centres. So there's one here on Guy's campus in the West Wing. I'm not sure if you've seen the student union facilities yet, but if you leave this building and turn right, there's where the students' union is, and you can buy a card there. You can also buy them at the Strand Campus and at Waterloo. And again, you can buy them at our Welcome Fair on Friday and Saturday. There'll be a store there where you can buy those. Are there any more? Maybe this one? Yeah. Um, Extracurriculars like dance and martial arts. Yeah, so there are, there are um, plenty of those around. Um, so the Dance Society at King's is, I think, our biggest society that we have, and they offer huge amounts of different types of dance all the way from beginners to advanced. They do com uh, competitive dancing as well as just um, uh, dance workshops for people who just enjoy it. Um, I think they have a membership fee to be part of the society, but um, they often get external people coming in, professionals coming in. So this, the dance society here is really good. I think they've won l quite a lot of uh, national competitions. Uh, martial arts, I'm not so, I don't know too much about them, but I know that they exist. Um, um, we have uh, judo, karate, um, and jiu-jitsu, I think, uh, uh, as well as many more. Um, but if you go on our website, and there's a whole section, I think, on uh, the martial arts societies. It's worth stressing what Jack said. There's 270 societies. If you can think of something, it probably exists. Um, so dance, martial arts, whatever, Quidditch, you know, they've got everything, bowling, <laughs> hairdressing, <laughs> snail, no, I don't know. Um, <laughs> Uh, and if, studies. If, um, there's, if there's something that you don't find, that, I mean it's rare, but if there's something that you feel like there's a, there's a gap there, you can actually apply to open your own society um, and then I think all you need to do is fill out a quick form on the Case Lesley website and find 25 other students who are interested and then you can become a, a society which means you can get money from Case Lesley to run the society and we'll also uh, market it for you. Every year I go to the Freshers' Fair, Welcome Fair, sorry, and uh, every year I find another store for a society that I couldn't have possibly imagined existed, but more than 25 King students uh, disagree with me, and that's why it exists, so it's fantastic. Um, the top question there about uh, classrooms. So in each building we have a small number of rooms which are kept kind of unbooked so that students can access them at the last minute if you need them. You can ask at the, at the reception desks in each, in each room. Um, but it, really that's kind of for last minute, maybe group work, and, and there is, it's very limited uh, because obviously there is so much pressure on the teaching space because we've got an awful lot of uh, teaching to, to fill in. If you're just looking to access a computer and have some space to work, on the King's mobile app there's a, a function on there where, that will tell you where the latest, uh, where the, the computers that are free are um, and, and that's the best way I would advise you to sort of identify spaces that you can, you can go and study. So uh, that's a very useful thing. Download the King's mobile app um, if you haven't already. It's very useful. Um, in terms of the email account working on your phone, we have IT tech bars around every campus. Um, find one of those and speak to an IT person to get that working. Um, it, sh it isn't difficult it does work, um, but I can't tell you now how to do it, so speak to someone who knows what they're talking about. Uh, in terms of using Keats as well, I don't know if that's something that's covered in the departmental inductions maybe, it's something that is very specific. Not everybody uses Keats um, and at the moment, and, and we're moving towards everybody moving key, using Keats, so um, uh, th there will be uh, sessions I think on how to do it. Again, you might want to ask at the IT um, tech bar if there's something about getting access to Keats there, but that sort of thing will come as part of your studies as you start to settle in, as you, as you work with your department, as you're needing to access access things and submit things, you will need to use Keats and, and you will develop a, a knowledge of it over, over time really. Um, Diana, how long is the wait to get a counselling appointment? Thank you. Um, yes, if you go onto our website and uh, download a form, you will get a reply back straight away. And at the moment we are saying that you should be offered an assessment appointment within two to three weeks. We do get very busy, but we are uh, doing everything we can to stay on top of that so that you will be assessed quickly. Um, we also have drop-in on, I think it's every day, um, on different campuses, and that's with our, we have a team of mental health advisors who can assess you and um, um, and then uh, you will get allocated to a counsellor if, if that is uh, what you require. 
So, uh, yeah, I hope that answers the question. Um, at the moment, early in the year, we, we do respond very quickly. And um, through the year, we're, we're going to try and keep to that. So if you are in urgent need, and there is a very comprehensive application form, so be very clear about um, you know what what your needs are, and it is fully confidential. So anything you tell us or write is is kept very securely. It doesn't have any. There is no interface with the academic side of the university at all. Um, unless the student wants that, so um, be assured that any information you put forward will be held securely. Um, yeah, so two to three weeks. Thank you. The, the, the thing to stress is, is don't don't worry about that. Um, we will assess your your needs based on on what the information you give us, and if we, if you need to be seen more urgently, uh, you know we'll do our best to, to do that. Don't worry about that. If you want to see the counselling service, please please do register. Don't be put off. Um, the, you know as soon as you're registered and as soon as you've given us some information, we can then work with you to make sure you get an appointment at the right time and see the right person. So there we go. Uh, David, there's a few here. I'm um, accessing yep. articles on the internet, lending books from the library, and how long separate. Life. Needing yep. a separate library card to issue books. That's sure thing. So the first one, um, yes, we do have access to PubMed, indeed. Um, so we've got many, many uh, databases for all of our subject disciplines, and uh, the majority is, is full, um, full text, the majority. Not, not everything is available in full text. If it isn't, we do have a very efficient interlibrary inter lending service. So you can get the full text, it may take a little longer, but the majority will be, will be full text because that's what we buy in. Uh, yes, you can lend books to library, so um, uh, standard um, for the latest textbooks is one week, seven day loans, so the majority of the books you're going to use are probably going to be one week loans because they're the core reading for your particular discipline. Uh, the, the longest you can have them for is four week loans, but these are generally uh, earlier editions, books which aren't considered core reading, there might be additional reading and so on and so forth. So it's one or four weeks, and we still do have a, a small collection of what's called short loan, so literally it's very short loan, it's one day, so they're either in the very high demand text normally, or rare text and so on and so forth. So the, the majority of books you'll, you'll be working with is probably one week loans. Uh, no, no, you don't need a separate library card. Your, your KCL ID card is your library card. So that gets you physically in and out of the libraries and it also uh, you can borrow books with your card. So your KCL ID card does everything. So it's not a separate, separate library card. Okay, thanks. In the interest of time, I'm going to try and rustle, rattle through a, a couple of these uh, myself, and then uh, we'll, we'll pass over to the um, team at the table to, to give you uh, a final tip. Career services, we have a huge career, um, career service here, careers team. Uh, they're mo mostly based over at the Strand, but they work very closely with your departments. So there'll be events and opportunities throughout the year which are linked to your departments. There'll be careers advisors who are linked to your departments and therefore uh, know and understand the opportunities that may be available to you that are specifically interested to you because of your academic discipline. Um, so you'll hear more about that at your, through your department essentially but yeah uh, there's all lots of information on the website as well so if you look for just King's Careers um, there's a huge amount of information there uh, and you'll have seen them referenced in the video at the start. Um, not many universities do provide food, um, there are some institutions in the UK that do have quite a collegiate system where everyone lives together and eats together etc but the vast majority of UK uh, universities don't do that, it would be great um, please continue to suggest that to the principal so it would be nice but um, I, I, we, we, that's just not something that we do here I'm afraid um, no you, you can't you you can register for a, a, a GP, where whichever your cl closest GP is, you can register uh, with the GP, it depends on where you live. Um, you can, uh, but the information about the, uh, the King's Health Centre is on, uh, on the website as well, but a lot of our students do register with uh, the GP at the Strand. Um, because it's obviously because it's a very very student focused service, but uh, but you know if you don't live anywhere near the campus, you shouldn't feel you need to register here. Register with your local uh, GP. But do that. Don't wait until you're ill and then wake up one morning and go, ah, I wish I'd registered. Register with your your GP. Um, and again, the information's on the website. Um, Microsoft Office 365, you can um, speak to the King's Tech people, the IT Tech Bar. Again, they'll be able to help you in that. Um, uh, loads of sport. How many sports clubs are there? 
65. There's no limit on how many you can sign up for, but there is a limit to how much time there is in the week. <laughs> um, so you probably can't play rugby and football and tennis at the same time. Um, but the, you know, the best advice I can give you is go along to the welcome fair, sign up for as much as you want, as much as you're interested in. You can always stop it and drop it and, and, and lose interest and, and work out you know, your, your balance and answer the next question. Yeah, actually, how much time do you have um, in the week? You know, you're not going to be able to do everything that you might want to do, but the best thing to do is sign up now. Uh, get, the get the information from those uh, societies and those clubs, work out when they train and when they play or when they meet, etc., and then you can fit it in around it. If you go along and don't sign up, then you'll have missed your chance. Well, you'll have missed your chance, you can join them, but in terms of getting that information, so there isn't a limit, just go along and, and do it, sign up for as much as you can. Um, the chaplaincy is for all faiths, as Jim mentioned at the start, all faiths or no faith. Um, please just go along and speak to them. I'm just, I'm just, I'm just going to try and rattle through a few just to, um, just to uh, uh, get through as much as possible. Um, there are campus maps on the website. I don't know if we've printed any off, and I've got a, we have. Estates. Great oh, estates. Uh, I've got um, very good detailed campus maps, so that will be available on reception desks, and, and there are also campus tours being organised as well, so you, you'll be able to get some there. Yeah. Outside, literally outside, literally there. Um, the, where are the best areas of restaurants and bars in London? <laughs> Okay, so on the mobile app, there's some information there. Um, there's lots of useful websites around, as you can imagine, lots of websites that, that tell you about good places to go in London. Time Out London is a very good one, but on the King's mobile app, they'll tell you some places to go. Um, you don't need to join KTLSU, you're all members already. Woohoo, well done. Uh, uh, student Oyster Card, what's the actual process to get a Student Oyster Card? Um, you need to apply online on the TFL website. Um, you put in your student, your King's student number. That is the number that's on your ID card and not your K number that you use to log into the computers. Um, that information is then sent by TFL to the student funding office. They verify that you're a student here and that you have enrolled. They'll confirm that back to them and then you'll be sent your um, Oyster card. You do have to pay a fee, I believe it's £20 and it should cover you for your whole course. Something to bear in mind, um, is that the discount, the 30% off, does not apply to pay as you go. Um, it's only if you're buying a travel card. So if you're buying it, you'd be getting it just because you've got ad hoc travel and you're hoping to get a discount. It doesn't work that way. One of our money mentors is writing a blog as we speak, and hoping that will be out in the next couple of weeks, hopefully on the wellbeing blog site, um, about how to get around the um, transport system and how the travel discounts work, which might be helpful to you. Sorry, can I just add something? If you have a 16 to 25 rail card, you can add that to your Oyster card, and then you do get a third of pay as you go travel. Hello. Sorry, Chris, we had a question. Just oh, okay. Oh, okay, great. Right. Uh, 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 I'm just going to answer one more. The uh, job shops, the jobs on campus, if you want to apply for jobs, um, there is a fair, a jobs fair on October, there's something or other, what did we work this out the other day? October the 14th or something like that, to, uh, that will give you access to all sorts of opportunities. Um, and then on the King's website, I think we have um, job shop kind of thing. Is it called job shop? Maybe not, I don't know. Um, but basically, look, the information's on the web page, just come and look up, uh, speak to the people on, on whatever date it is, 14th of October, something like that. Right. In the interest of time, we need to start to wrap up. So I'm going to ask everyone on the panel to give you one tip for the first couple of weeks of term to help you settle into Kings, and we'll start at that end with Lawrence. So I'd say I'm going to promote the chaplaincy here. Uh, do come along to our chaplaincy barbecue at the Strand, uh, which is at 4 o'clock next week, Monday. So do come along and share community. And every Monday, um, starting from Monday the 3rd, there's an international lunch in the chaplaincy at 12.30. So do come along, share community, uh, and share good times. Uh, this might sound a bit predictable, but do check out the College Chapel if you haven't yet. Even if it's not your sort of typical place to hang out, it's usually quiet, so it's nice for a bit of sort of downtime, time to think. Uh, we have, it, it's, it's open all day and it's lovely, lovely 18th century. Was the original hospital chapel as well for Thomas Guy when, it, when that all started. Um, and that's opposite Boland House where all the science gallery works is going on at the minute. But also, can I just quickly say, if you're free, <laughs> next Thursday at quarter past five. Lawrence and I are being officially welcomed as new chaplains in an evensong service in the chapel with, with the... What more can you want? So, um, yeah, please do. Come along if you can. Um... Um, in terms of the library, I suppose my message would be to contact us, really. Just come and, come and speak to us. Any questions you have, either online via the website or come into the library and grab a member of staff. So, yeah, just please, please do contact us with any questions at all. 
Um, I'm going to say nothing related to why I'm here, really. I'm going to suggest that if you're new to London, walk between the campuses. Don't take the tube or get on a bus if you can't be bothered to walk. Um, but actually, that's how I found my way around London. So I'm really great at intuitively getting from A to B in a, in a range of sort of central London locations because I walked everywhere because I couldn't afford to take the tube. So that's going to be my tip. And walking's really good for you as well. It keeps you sane. Um, so I think that, that's what I would do. And you just need your phone for that. You don't need special maps. Um, my piece of advice would be is uh, to, as Chris already said, to sign up to as many societies as possible and then you can easily drop out of them later on. Um, I met most of my friends that I still have now um, through joining societies and groups at case LSU. Um, it, it, it is daunting when you go to your first like meeting of the society, but you'll soon get over that within, within a few minutes and you'll meet, meet some lifelong friends there, so get as involved as you can outside the classroom. Mine is simply to um, ask for support and help at any point that you need it. There will come a moment when everyone in this room will think, ah, I can't do this, so I need some help. And, and the most important thing is that you tell us, you tell your flatmates, you tell your family, whatever, but actually don't bottle it up, ask for support, we will be able to help you. Uh, and, and the easiest way to, to find us, uh, you'll be reminded at the end, is, is by just coming to find Compass and, and don't remember everything we've said to you today, just find a Compass desk or find us online and, and they will make sure that you get to the right support. Yes, I wanted to echo what uh, Chris said and also to say that if you have a, a, an urgent need to speak to somebody, do contact us. You will see somebody within the, uh, a day if it's really urgent and there is a phone number on our website as well. Um, so don't hold, hold back if you need to see somebody very soon. Um, and I suppose my take home message is don't judge your insides by other people's outsides. Um, you, you can often feel that you're the only one struggling when actually most people at your age, your stage, being at university will encounter struggles. So um, I, I run a session for finally a medical students and it's surprising when we run a group how many of them say, I didn't know other people felt like I do. And I think that's really sad. So if you start off thinking, actually, I'm not so sure they're all as shiny, bright people as they look while I'm struggling. OK, it's natural to struggle at this stage. Thanks. Um, I would sort of echo what I said earlier and step out of your comfort zone as early as possible. So if that's, you know, raising your hand in a lecture or going to see your personal tutor early on or just asking someone to go out for coffee or tea, just step out of your comfort zone as early as possible so that that comfort zone enlarges and that you start building that confidence that's going to carry you through the three years. And then just visit the Keynes Wellbeing website um, and come have a chat with us. Hi, I'm going to put my money advisor hat on and say the obvious, set a budget. Um, set a budget for your studies now um, as soon as possible and you will not struggle with money. Um, London is often seen as an expensive city, but it doesn't have to be. There is plenty you can do within whatever budget you have. It's about acknowledging that early and, and planning. Um, we can help you with that. Um, we have got a drop-in tomorrow from 11 till 3 at the Waterloo campus where we will have money mentors, student, advisor, student money advisors and specialist advisors as well um, if you need any help about money or not quite sure where to start. We've also got online tools on blackbullion.com where you can just sign up with your King's email um, address and that will talk you through what are the average costs of uh, you might need to spend, get you to think about where you like to spend your money, what's important to you and, and where you can kind of set some limits. Um, so that's a, a good tool for you to use. It's absolutely free. Okay, good luck. Enjoy. Um, I get to uh, finish off, which is great. So I there was a, just want to pick up on something that you kind of text through um, around balance. Um, and it's not just a student issue. I, I think probably everybody on this panel, if you ask them about balancing life, um, people will be worried about finance. They'll be trying to have time with their family, their career. Uh, they'll be trying to make time to exercise. All of those things. It's not something that will go away. but. That the message kind of want to get across is be really proactive um, about your time here. 
Um, go and see support services earlier. Don't let a little problem become a big one. Um, but also try and uh, engage with the fun side of university life as well, uh, just to try and get a bit of that balance uh, because it's going to be uh, tough in terms of your academics. But there's also loads you can learn from the, the fun side, joining societies, enjoying London, think of London as your campus. There's lots out there. Um, and just, just try and enjoy it as well. You can have fun. Excellent. Oops. So um, just the final thing to say is thanks very much for coming along. Um, Chris mentioned there the compass and just to give you guys an idea of how you can access the compass, it's everywhere basically. Um, inside all of the different campus libraries, the email is exactly the one that you'd expect, thecompass at kcl.ac.uk. Um, if you wanted to call, you might not have time to take that number down now, but it is um, available on the, the website. You can check their Twitter there. Um, but definitely Definitely, you know, one of the easiest uh, ways is just to go and see the Compass. Um, they're very, very friendly. And if you have any of the questions that maybe we haven't had a chance to answer today as part of the session, they will be able to answer them or at very least um, point you in the direction of the service that you need to speak to. So really the kind of access point to all of these different guys and the services that they represent um, and uh, will be able to support you throughout your time here at King. So finally, thanks so much for, for coming along and engaging today and we all hope that you have a great time um, here at King's. Thank you.